created by a government, but it is a strategy to create an environment within which we can pursue our environmental agenda. These are two things. So on that note, Mr. Speaker, I also want to put into perspective the fact that the Ghana Beyond Aid Agenda, per the document, paragraph C of the set of I don't even know they were able to read that particular document because they would have come across it. He says that Ghana Beyond Aid is not to reject aid, but to develop and transform out of dependency. That is, that, that is the whole agenda of Ghana Beyond Aid. Oh, on that to that, I also want to put into perspective the fact that the Ghana Beyond Aid we are seeing today has been in existence for a very long time and not the one they seek to be attacking. But credit must be given to the current government. No, no. Because we are across board throughout history. No political party has ever made a submission to develop the economy of Ghana Beyond Aid with aid. No political party has ever made that assertion. It's to harness our local resources for development. So the focus has always been to build the economy beyond. The focus has always been to build the economy beyond it. So we are telling you that part. It is beyond what they are discussing. It's not. It's not. It's not beyond it. You see, Ghana beyond it. So that because I think we need to read. The document for ourselves. Right. That document transcends politics. That document transcends politics. Even if Ghana Beyond Aid was, was, even if Ghana Beyond Aid was meant to be a political rhetoric, mm -hmm. at the level of the discussion we got into at this material moment, it is beyond that because the electorates have bought no, into that. The electorates have bought into that in the sense that no political party in Ghana pride itself today to develop the country with aid. That is why the debt debate has been around. No political party wants to be associated with gold. No political party wants to be associated with aid. That is how come each and every political party is aiming at harnessing local resources for development. In that regard, I just want to say that Ghana beyond it is different from the agenda. It's different from the what abuse we have been. It's different from the agenda 40, 30. It's different from the development. Ghana beyond aid is not a development. Just like that. So it's a, it's 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 a, it's a, it is more fundamental. It is more fundamental. Changing the environment within which development has to be So let's get to say that was very So that's from the minority coming back and there's another way. Okay. Okay. I want to thank the gentleman for the honorable uh, majority side for the basis for us. I want to refer to the statement of the Honorable Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the gentleman. One, a stabilized macroeconomy. Two, inflation relatively under control. Mr. Speaker, after almost about four years, none of these have been realized. Almost about. And the third one, support from private initiative by government. This is what he said, and action has not passed. That is a good time for the support of the Second, it seems like it was a good time for the support of the Second, it seems like it was a good time for the support of the Second, Second, Honorable Members, 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 and the total pay in Ghana both both against the Ghana Please give us Why did it do this?
So, um, honor members, on this note, I'll call the majority leader, who is seen as the leader of the house, to give thanks and closing remarks to our invited guest. And then uh, from there, I'll see our invited guest off, and then we'll come back and take uh, some few more bits, and then we'll close for, for the day. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker and the Honorable Members. Mr. Speaker, before I thank the Honorable Member in the waiting, let me put uh, a very passionate appeal across. It is very important to me, and I'll be very unfair to the University of Ghana students not to have forward this, given this opportunity. Few months away from tonight, We'll be heading to the polls to elect the next president and members of parliament for the country Ghana in the fourth republic to constitute the eighth parliament under the jurisdiction. Now we have taken key interest in the political trajectory of the constituency Ayawasu West Wakaf. The very last election 
that took place in this constituency was hugely characterized with unwarranted issues or happenings. Paramount is the shooting uh, world of view. I am a student of the University of Ghana, and the University of Ghana has 25 branches as part of the 137 branches of the Awasu West Wagon constituency. So what it therefore means is that there will be electioneering activities on this campus, campus hugely. As a candidate who will be on the ballot paper, I want to make a very passionate appeal that throughout this process, all I want to say is that we must ensure that before, during, and elections, the security needs of the students here on campus is paramount in your campaigning and your activities. Mm -hmm. I was happy when they mentioned as the first concern the security, because actually as a human being, that is my first concern for every University of Ghana student. Because last semester, a gentleman was openly booted, and today we don't know where he is. Last semester, a gentleman was shot dead at the back of Barco Phase 2. Today we heard nothing about it. This is an open university. People come in, people leave, and we don't know what's going on. The University of Ghana is the only place people can come and kill you, and nobody, and they don't get dressed. So, as a primary actor in these upcoming elections, I want to humbly put before you that everything within your power that you can do to make sure that our security needs uh, is of uh, priority to you. God will bless you for that. Because I don't think most of us here, our, our, our parents are lecturers, our parents are home, and we are here, <laughs> and we are conscious of our security. That said, um, it's a speaker in the house. It's an honor to be called upon to. I mean, thank the honorable member. Uh, I've, I've had the opportunity of uh, watching some of the movies. I'm a local boy. But one of the, you know, it's been a reason I wanted to act because there are some parts, even if you act and they don't pay you, you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't care. That's <laughs> understand. And uh, from my own observation, I think that it's very good at those uh, parts. <laughs> so, we want to thank you from the University of Ghana Parliament House. The very fact that you've been able to make it here among your busy schedule is so gratifying and breathtaking. The subsequent days uh, ahead of us when we hope to meet just as we have done tonight, maybe we'll be calling upon you again and please, harden not your hearts. So we thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Wish you the very best in your endeavors. The University of Ghana Parliament House is facing a couple of uh, you know challenges, which some I think uh, are financial. I mean, Oliver Twist, for us, we, we don't cease asking. So if there is anything you can do to help promote democracy from below here at the University of Ghana, I'll be very grateful. And wish you the very best. If you uh, achieve electoral success and victory, we want you to come back and share that with us. Uh, but if otherwise, we want you to know that um, there are other uh, ways you can actively contribute to the development of, of Ghana so that together, the Ghana Beyond Aid will be a reality. Yeah. 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 May God bless you, <laughs> and we are grateful for having you. Thank you. Thank you.